What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's exciting, taking a little field trip out to Lowe's, home improvement, pick up some lumber, get the structure for the layout. Pretty excited to finally get out and get the stuff and get going on the construction process. So stay tuned and we'll get everything we need. My happy place, Lowe's Home Improvement. Love coming here to get stuff to build. All right, so we'll start out over here and get some two by fours. Be the obvious main structure of the base. Probably gonna get uh, a couple dozen of these. Never have too many laying around. Move over, grab some plywood. Ouch, uh, sixty bucks a piece. Uh, wood prices are still up there a little bit, but. This is half inch, it's primed on one side, so it'll be good for painting. Next, I'm gonna grab some of this foam board. It'll be good to use as some sound deadening at the bottom of the base, and as well, uh, use it for some scenery once we kind of get to that point down the road. Next, gonna move over and grab some screws. Uh, lots of different options here as far as lengths and colors. I think I'm gonna go with these red ones. It should be good uh, once we paint the top of the base with landscape to help hide them and uh, blend in a little bit with the color of the wood. All right, moving on, we're gonna grab some of these uh, Craig screws. I'm gonna be using these to join a lot of the boards together for the framework. And I'll talk a little bit about that more later on uh, as well. I'm gonna grab some of these screw covers. Uh, That'll help hide some of those holes that we create with the Craig jig. What up, dude? How's it going? <laughs> all right, we're back home. Let's get all this stuff unloaded. I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague we all love to hate Have to play the game, have to make a name All our insecurities are on This display. is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Living in a time where disease is on every screen I won't let them fester me I know most are festering Negativity is a plague for the mentally weak No mercy this here is my plan for the layout base assembly so whenever you guys are planning this stuff out it's really good to jot the stuff down because i've changed this probably a half a dozen times this graph paper makes a great uh, reference each one of these squares for me i scaled it out to be roughly about three inches so this allows me to get kind of a realistic scaling of how the center lines of the two by fours or whatever wood that you may use will be. So uh, again, made multiple revisions. You can see different eraser marks and stuff on here to uh, kind of get this the way I wanted it. So let's just kind of walk through what I have planned. So our layout size is roughly about seven and a half feet by 15 and a half feet. I had to make some revisions just based on once I started getting back out here and measuring and being realistic with myself about moving around the layout this is what I determined that we're gonna have to run. So maybe one day I'll have a bigger space and we can expand it. So I'm gonna make this in essentially two sections. We're gonna have this seven and a half, roughly seven and a half square this side and this side. As you see down the center, we'll have those bolted together. So this way in the future, if I need to move this thing for some reason or another, I can unbolt it, obviously do what I need to on the scenery, pull this apart and make it a lot easier to move it wherever I need to. So as you can see, I have multiple legs here that should give me more than enough support. And what I'm gonna do here that's gonna be a little bit unique, that's different from probably many out there, is as I said in previous videos, I wanna be able to lift this up out of the way when I'm not using it. So we're actually gonna make these legs where they swing down. So I'm gonna put a nice radius on the top. We're gonna to have some sleeved holes where I can put some bolts through. You can see here where I've kind of marked this out, how we're gonna do it. 
And in the corners, I want to put in a couple pieces of plywood and have locating holes where when I swing this leg up, I can actually put a retaining pin and hold it out of the way. So as I lift this up in the air, it is uh, not dangling down legs where you hit your head on it when you walk through. So here on each side, you also see where I have marked steel. I'm planning to have two beams where, as you can see, they're kind of tilted in right now. I can actually swing those out. They'll be longer or wider, I should say, than the layout. And I can put my lifting rings in and actually then lift this up towards the ceiling. Um, the only other thing uh, is going to be putting some wheels on here. That will give me a little bit of flexibility. If I want to shuffle this thing around just a little bit in the garage here, whenever it is down on the floor, uh, be it I need to have a little more room to work on something or push it over to the corner a little bit more to get around, I have that. Um, the only other things I'm going to do is notch the corners here, uh, roughly about 12 foot back. I'm sorry, <laughs> 12 inches back. Um, and again, this is just to get away from a sharp corner as you're walking away, walking around to uh, give you a little more clearance. And here you see I have this radius cut. This is where I'm actually going to drop that layout down some in this area. And my plan is to put a bridge section here uh, just to give, again, a little bit more character to this layout. So um, plan is to use the Craig tool to do the joints with some wood glue, give it lots of strength. Um, I am going to put a couple pieces here just to prevent the layout from wanting to do this. Uh, we'll screw that in probably from the inside just so you don't see the uh, screw heads. Uh, and I think that will give us plenty of strength. And again, multiple uh, pieces in between to add a little bit of rigidity. And I'll likely, once I get these legs in, probably put a piece through here too, just to um, give a little bit more strength. So this is what I have planned. We'll see how everything works out. And with that, uh, let's get to cutting some wood and getting this built. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be using the Craig jig to join the framework together. So what this is, if people aren't really familiar with it, is essentially you're cutting pocket holes into the wood. As you can see here, use your drill bit into the jig, and you're able to drive this screw right in without doing any other pilot holes, and you get a nice, clean, flush joint to where you don't have any exposed screw heads. You do have the hole, but then of course, that's what these guys here are for. You can fill that hole in, a little bit of glue, then you don't see it. So essentially just set your jig up with the length for your drill bit, pocket hole, clamping in, drill your holes. What I'm gonna use as well is a little bit of wood glue. Do not underestimate the power of this stuff. It can sometimes be stronger than screws itself once it's cured. So with this and those screws, it should be more than plenty to support the weight of the layout and give us some extra rigidity for lifting this thing off the floor. Starting out by cutting the framework here, the two by fours, went with the premium wood, few less knots, and normally it's a little better shape. So I'm not a master woodworker by any means, but a few fall basics and uh, normally stuff will come together pretty good. The first off, start by cutting one of your ends. That way you have a nice flush cut. And from there you can measure and get your final length. And that way you'll have a smooth cut on each side. And also for me, I like to use a nice fine tooth blade that'll give a really nice smooth cut as well and less splinters. And again, keep it nice and smooth. Another tip would be to always make sure you're cutting consistently uh, when you're doing your boards. If you're gonna cut on the line, cut every board on the line. Don't alternate and do one left to the right because then based on the thickness of the blade, which could be a 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch, that means every time you cut that board, if you're not consistent on which side of the line you cut, then your board's gonna vary by that 16th to an eighth of an inch. And then your whole structure is gonna be out of square or skewed. So pick one, it's not super critical. I like to normally cut right at the uh, edge of the line to the right and take a measurement, make sure I'm happy with it. But the biggest thing is just consistency. I have all the pieces cut for the first section and I've kind of got them all laid out here, getting ready to screw them together. One thing I've done is went through and marked where my center line is going to be 
for my center supports. Did that on that side as well. So that way I can make sure that they are all square to one another, lined up and even. And not only did I mark them here, I also marked the center of this stud so that I can make sure that everything's lined up properly. And with this being roughly 88 inches, I put these on 22 inch centers. So overall, we're pretty close to being equally spaced between these. So another tool I'll be using is this joint clamp that uh, Craig makes as well. So what this allows you to do, as you can see, it's got sort of this dowel on the end. You can actually put it in this pocket. <laughs> Not quite do it that way, but you can essentially then get it level where you want it. And we'll try to scoot over the edge and then clamp it. And what this will do is hold that together so that you have a nice flush square joint. Once you obviously get all that lined up, this is just a demo, but once you put those screws in, uh, you'll know it'll be exactly where you want to go, You're not trying to fumble around. And of course, like I said, I'm going to put some of this uh, wood glue in between that. So we'll have a nice secure bond. Shouldn't be going anywhere. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the fucking hours It takes to get some power Don't be fucking sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And fuck all the doubters They're just yeah. fucking downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown Okay, so we have the first frame all screwed together. And as you saw, I measured corner to corner. And what I wanna see is the same measurement. And that means that I'll be perfectly square. So I'm within about a 16th of an inch. That's gonna be good enough for what I'm doing. So next we're gonna put in some supports in between here. And that will add some rigidity as well, maintain the shape of this so that it doesn't uh, want to twist and get out of square again. So when you're doing that, what I like to do is first, you know, determine where we're going to put them. So I'm going to have one here because I'm going to have a leg on this side. A leg on this side is going to swing down. So I can't have anything in between. But on this section, I'll do two. One here, one here. And then alternate. One, one, two, one, two. Um, and when you're cutting these, don't just cut one all the same length. You want to come and actually measure between each one of these sections and cut it to exact size. Because just with the nature of the wood, some may be slightly bowed. Uh, some slight variance is where we put the center lines and how they're spaced out. And if you just cut them all the same, start screwing together, it's going to cause this frame to twist. And we don't want that. We want to maintain that perfect measurement uh, corner to corner so that it maintains uh, its perfect squareness. So I'm going to go out and again, measure, and go ahead and install all those. I've completed adding all the internal structure to the base we've uh, put in all of the supports so now we're going to move on to installing the legs i'm going to start with uh, four total i do have one extra one on my drawing there but i think i'm gonna start with four and see where that ends up uh, it may be enough support without 
doing any additional ones. So starting off with, here's the first leg as we begin, uh, 36 inches total length, and we're gonna end up with about 40 inches or so as far as the table height, because we're gonna add a caster here. So these are the wheels that I picked up from Amazon. So the nice thing about it is once I'm in place and I'm good, I can lower this down and lift this up off the roller wheel. But if I do want to do some work and move it around the shop a little bit, bring this back up and still be able to move it around pretty easy. So this is about three inch by three square mounting pattern. So this is where I'm going to add this extra little piece here. And just to improve aesthetics a little bit and just avoid a sharp edge of cut a 45 degree here. So essentially we're going to bolt this to the bottom there and the overall will give us about 40 inches. So we put a pivot point here. I'm going to drill a hole. As you can see, I've cut a radius with the jigsaw. This will allow us to swing this arm on the framework. So we'll bring this over, give an example of kind of what I'm thinking. So as it sits here, this will be able to give us clearance so that as we rotate this up on the pivot, we can clear. And then we'll position it so that it's roughly inside that corner once it's extended. Also, I'm gonna put in a piece of plywood here. Uh, I have to figure out how exactly I'm gonna do that, but I do wanna be able to put a pin to essentially lock that in. So maybe not plywood, I may have to just put a two by four block here to where once we're extended, we can put a pin in here in order to lock it in. And then when we're not using it, swing down, we'll put a pin in there. That's likely more uh, what I'll have to do. So, what I'm also planning on doing, instead of just drilling a hole and putting a bolt through, what I have here, this is actually just some conduit. Pick it up at Lowe's. But the nice thing about it is the diameter here is three quarter inch. So that's pretty common size for a drill bit for the wood. And if I come down and look at my hardware here, what I found earlier was I have some of these large bolts. I think this is a metric. It is, this is 8.8, .8, so it's definitely metric. I'm not sure exactly diameter, but this here fits perfect inside that. So what I could do, or what I'm going to do, is cut this in various lengths and actually make a sleeve that will go in here and to the corresponding hole in the frame so that when we're loading this piece as well as swinging it up and down we're not just digging into the wood every time with the threads of that bolt so that'll be a lot more sturdy and it'll actually give some strength around that as well and um, allow us hopefully many years of use without tearing this wood up so that's the plan i'm going to get all this together we'll get a few legs installed and then we'll take a look this is the finished leg assembly I have the adjustable caster here. I also have my block for locating once we have it pulled up. So we'll just demonstrate the idea. This will come up once the table is lowered down. And then that will hold in the leg from moving. And I'll probably either get some longer bolts or get some quick release pins. I drill this at a half inch, which is pretty standard. And then when it's down, we can have that to where it will keep it locked in place and up. So I think it came out pretty good. So now it's just a matter of making four more or three more and then making the other side and we can get it all together and put the top on. And this is the final result for the first half. As you can see, we have all four legs on. Everything's extended. One thing I did add was this piece here at the bottom to help connect these two legs. But as you notice, I put it on the outside so these legs can still swing up, be completely flush on the bottom. As you can see, they are still in line with the edge of the table. So it's turned out really well. I'm really excited about it. It's very stable. I can basically put all my weight on it and it is not going anywhere. And the best part, 
as you can see with those casters I chose, I can roll this thing around as much as I want. So once I get this other half built, we'll be set. So that pretty much wraps up this vlog. I will continue building the second half and likely we'll get the top part on. And so the next time you guys see this, we will start laying down some track. So hopefully you enjoyed this part of the build. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as well, if you have any comments or suggestions at the bottom, feel free to add it. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you guys.